gotta get like sorted. People in the UK like to sort things, huh? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Is it sorted? Oh, we're ready. Yeah. Oh, we're live right yeah. now. Sorry. Sorted. It's crazy. <laughs> we'll take the UK uh, lingo conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we intro? Absolutely, Let's brother. Thing. Let's yeah. do a little introduction. <laughs> uh, everybody, uh, I am Mike Veona here from uh, Rose Hill Sourdough, uh, and uh, this <laughs> yeah. guy. Honestly, yeah. doesn't need an introduction. Look at his pretty face. It's beautiful. Wow, uh, this, man. Is, uh, this, is my, this is my guy, Artisan Brian you're, over here. You're Introduce flattering. Yourself. Hello, brother. Hey. Good to see Introduce you. Yourself. Hey, guys, I'm Brian. Um, I am a baker. I'm from Miami. Um, I've got a blog that maybe you've seen or used before. But I'm here, thrilled today um, to be with Mike and yeah. talk about sourdough and uh, pizza, uh, two things that we both love. Yeah, absolutely. So we're here uh, in beautiful Edinburgh. Edinburgh. How you I learned how to pronounce Edinburgh. I used to say Edinburgh. I said Edinburgh until too. about an hour ago, it's and it's Edinburgh. That's how it's spelled. Absolutely beautiful. It's great to be here across the pond. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving it. To eat pizza again. I've been here. I've been here about a month. So I joined Uni about a month ago, uh, full time, and I'm loving it so far. It's been an amazing experience. It's just crazy that like this is my life now. I get to do live broadcasts with freaking artists and Brian. This is yeah. nuts. This is, uh, well, it's not your life. Like, we're not going to do this every day. Like, it's crazy. It's part Brian's of Brian's moving here. Can we yeah. break that news off? Is that cool? Oh, is your wife probably yeah, watching? She's probably watching. <laughs> the news is official. Uh, right on. Cool. So, yeah, we're talking about sourdough today. Yeah. Um, uh, honestly, uh, what are your, let's, you know, how should we start? Like, why are you, why do you make sourdough yeah. bread pizza? Like, Such a good question. Doing that? Uh, so, I started doing pizza a long time ago. Honestly, it was like a way for me to, to feed my roommates and like my girlfriend when I was broke yeah. in college. Like honestly, like that's how it started. It was like going down to the grocery store, buying some dough, going to Home Depot and buying like these terracotta tiles for like a dollar. And that was my pizza stone. It was just like, yeah. Anyway. For real? That was literally how I started was just going and buying, yeah. and buying this pizza. Anyway, uh, so I started making pizza and then I just got better at it. And then I went to Italy and took a pizza class in Florence, fell in love with pizza culture when I was traveling through Italy. And then, like, two and a half years ago, uh, I switched everything over to sourdough. I just started doing some more research on it. Yeah. And it's, like, to me, it's just, like, the, the purest form of bread. Yeah. So, like, tell, what, is it, what do you mean? Like, because I kind of went through the same thing, but, like, in your eyes, what yeah. does that mean when you, when you switch to sourdough? What, do, what exactly are you, are you saying? Yeah. So, like, I went from, from rushing a process that's been proven over thousands of years. Like, how do you make bread? It's not with a packet of instant dry yeast. Right. Like, that's, that was such a revelation to me. It's like, bread's been made for thousands of years a certain way. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we have some technological advance, and we think, oh, all we need to do now is just rip open a yeah. packet of yeast, throw in some flour, mix in some water, and boom, we've got, we've got good bread. Right. So now, with sourdough. They're naturally fermenting the flour yeah, and water. Exactly. That's, exactly. So that, I went through the same thing. I, I started making bread when I was a kid to feed people. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. I feel like most bakers ultimately are trying to feed people. Absolutely. So that's like why you know we bake or make pizza and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, so obviously I wasn't making sourdough when I was 12. I was yeah. just using instant yeast. Um, and I kind of went through that progression where at some point I was like, whoa, there's. You know, I started seeing some people online doing amazing things with sourdough. And I was like, wait, like, what? I didn't realize you could bake a different way. Yeah. And, and once you open that door, you know, I started with bread and baguettes and all that stuff. Then you get into pizza. You know, you yeah. open that door with pizza and the possibilities yeah. are just endless. Yeah, I'm with you. It's crazy, too, because growing up, sourdough to me, I grew up in California. And so sourdough is this like this kind of weird sour bread from San Francisco. Right. But even that, like I, you had a post the other day calling out like a grocery store for calling out oh, sourdough bread. Oh, yeah, I did. I, yeah. Well, it's just that I was walking in the store and I saw, um, I don't know what it was, some bread. Like and, sourdough and, and, baguette. And, well, yeah, it said, it said sourdough French bread yeah. on, the, on the sign. Yeah. Uh, and it cost like a dollar. And so I just, you know, I picked it up. The ingredients list was uh, entirely too long. Yeah. And not to, not to get into, into that whole thing, but it's... Um, you know, it's there's a misconception of what like can and cannot be yeah, sourdough. Sure. And I mean, I'm not against yeast, instant yeast or fresh yeast. I, I use it actually at work yeah. when I make uh, baguettes sometimes or a poolish. Yeah. You know, di there there are we'll different ways. Yeah, we'll there there are, there are different ways to use instant yeast. You yeah. don't you don't just have to throw it into your mix. You can you can let that ferment overnight, mm. right? And then make a different mix with it. So I don't have a problem um, using fresh yeast or instant yeast, but when people use terminology that's not correct, mm. I think I think we just need to uh, direct them to the right education about Absolutely. it instead of 
like you know judging is just Absolutely. you know they're gonna say sourdough baguette but it's really like instant yeast with a bunch of added acids Dude, it's in crazy it. <laughs> it's, it's like crazy. come on guys like and no but but the problem is if a grocery store sells that yeah then consumers who who don't know good bread they're yep. gonna buy it and eat it and yep. they're gonna say man i don't like sourdough that yeah. was pretty bad um and yes. without really yes. having tasted actual naturally leavened bread yeah. and so then that makes our job harder i know right because we're, we're trying to get more it's people so true. to eat healthier bread yeah. Or healthier pizza, yeah. Well, but what they're getting in the stores is not uh, what it should be. I've had so many customers come to me when I was running my pizza pop up, going, "Oh, it's sourdough pizza," and I was yeah. like, "Stop! Throw that misconception out the window. Like, stop thinking of it as sourdough as this like extra tangy Correct. bread. It's like when you make sourdough, depending on fermentation time and temperature, yeah. it doesn't have to be tangy at all. Yeah, it's just completely naturally fermented. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the thing is, um, you know, you can get that flavor when you use a sourdough starter. You can get that acidic, strong flavor. Um, and a lot of, I work for a pizzeria, you know, I'm, I'm the head baker for, um, an Italian restaurant group in Miami right now. Super humble brag. And, um, Super humble brag. And, uh, <laughs> when no, but, but you know, nah, with, 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 <laughs> with, Hey man, <laughs> from home baker to head baker guys, That's it can happen. Cool. Hey, it, can it can happen, happen in man. like six months. Yeah, it's um, crazy. No, but so a lot of people when they're eating pizza, they don't actually like to t to taste that, yeah. that, that fermentation flavor. Yeah. So it can be kind of a, I don't want to say controversial thing, but, um, you know, I, I work with a lot of Italians as well. You, you know, if you make a pizza and it's naturally leavened and, but it's got that kind of sour kick to it, not, you know, some people might not like that just because yeah. it's not true to that traditional flavor their dough carries yeah, yeah. doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so absolutely. you have to balance, <clears throat> you have to balance like what is the market of people want to actually taste when they're getting a pizza? Yeah. There's some people that are purists, you know, like you know, people in Naples, like you'll watch these TV yeah, shows yeah, where they travel. Yeah. Uh, and some, some Italian guys are like, yo, no, it can't taste. If you taste the fermentation, it's not good. Yeah, so yeah. again, it makes our job harder yeah. when we're trying to make sourdough pizza the first thing people, you know, they'll be like, oh, but I don't want it to taste sour. Yeah. You know, and, it, know. Can, and it can happen. You know, yeah. I, I can't guarantee. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I make bread and I'm like, you know, I can't guarantee it's not going to be sour. Honestly, yeah. it's, it has a mind of its own. I yeah. just, I let it go and then I bake it uh, and hopefully it's delicious. Yeah. But, Let's but, get into the mind of its own thing. Cause yeah. that's like, it's so true. Like we talk about sourdough in general as this like class of bread, but sourdough, what it really is, is a culture of or microorganisms. It's, Correct. It's bacteria and it's yeast. And kind of getting to the point of our first questions we ping the community about. People are just like, what is sourdough? Like, what yeah. is a sourdough starter? Right. Right? So, like, for me, I call my starter a culture. It's a, what you were talking about earlier. It's like yeah. a little nerdier term. Yeah. But people, I mean, name them off of me. Like, people call them starters, cultures, mothers, leavens. Like, what else people call these things? Man, they, I don't know. You, I think you named them pretty much of them. all of them, yeah, right? I, like, I call mine a starter. Um, I mother dough. Other, yeah, yeah. yeah, other dough, mother dough, yeah. um, grandmother. If yeah. it's really old, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but yeah, I call mine basically a sourdough starter. And essentially, uh, when I got into it, I, I wasn't really thinking too scientifically. I just wanted, you know, I just mixed flour with water and yeah. just put it on my countertop. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't really thinking about the microorganisms. And yeah. you know, I still, you know, the science behind it's not really my forte. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna lie about that. I have a lot to learn in that regard. Um, and I think that you you have more of that. Obviously, you're an engineer, so you've got that scientific mind. That's what I appreciate about <laughs> it, though. Like when I started it, it yeah. was this like experimentation of like I'd done some research. I just had a friend who got diagnosed with some uh, this like form of arthritis. Basically, she would eat bread and she, her joints would swell up and stuff. And her doctor was like, oh, no more bread, which meant I couldn't make her pizza anymore. Right. And so I was like, I did this research on sourdough. I was like, well, if I make sourdough, I've heard that maybe that could help naturally fermented sourdough. And sure enough, she could eat my bread and pizza, no problem. And it's that, so I got into it because of the science. Like, right. What is different about this bread with yeah. these microorganisms, with this lactic acid bacteria? Yeah. Like what's making this, what, what's different? But I did the same thing as you. I took some flour and water and stirred it up, put it hey, on my man. counter. I was just trying hey. to, yeah. And what do we got? I mean, let's, this is so, let's do it. so this is, this is my starter. Uh, this is the Rose Hill sourdough starter. I named her Lucille. Hold on. Can we take a moment? Guys? This is, this is the Rose Hill sourdough. <laughs> That's her. Mm. Smells good, right? Rose Hill sourdough. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm so glad <laughs> to be able to smell. I'm not. Take it. Yeah. Eat it. Oh my God. It's good, right? Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Anyway. Sorry People are going to be like. He just ate. Like, you can do that. Like, yeah. it's okay. If you get some doughy sourdough, like, it's all right. If it's a little wet, it's a little doughy. It, like, that's I, just I why encourage back. people yeah. to taste it, not on some weird, like, pretentious thing. Like, it's, uh, like, tasting wine and all that kind of stuff. I encourage you to taste it just so you get more familiar with 
like what it ta- what it's what is it you know what i mean it's it's a living thing it's like kind of an organism so yeah. taste it embrace it absolutely. smell it yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. touch it and stuff like absolutely. that absolutely so so my my sourdough it does smell good i fed this this morning it smells really good um my sourdough is a half mix of uh, bread flour and whole meal flour whole wheat flour and i know you've got some different ones that you feed too. yeah um well, do you want to get to this question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should yeah. we? Should we uh, so it. it looks like Pip yeah. is asking, hello, Pip. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Pip is asking, how do you use a starter and how does it work? How does it work is kind of All a right? loaded and, question. And, and, yeah, and so like <laughs> I kind of, I, I know you just asked me about yeah. what mix uh, I did, so I can kind of try to wrap that into, into the answer to yeah. this. So how do you use a starter? Um, it, it is definitely a... That's definitely a question that has many, many answers. But yeah. essentially, when you create one uh, by mixing flour and water together over the course of like a week, you do some regular feedings, it'll start to rise and fall. OK, once it gets to the point where you understand when it's going to rise and when it's going to fall, you'll learn when to make dough with it. OK, mm-hmm. that's basically like the, the first thing you got to start to understand. Yeah. So once you got that down, you got a healthy starter. And it's at this peak, you know, sometimes you can put a, like a little rubber band here yeah. when you feed it and then you can see how much it's grown past that rubber band. OK, once it's uh, once it's at that peak and you're comfortable with it, you can take some of it. OK, you put it in a bowl, basically another bowl with flour and water. You mix it together and at some point you add some salt to it and then you add some more water a little bit, you know, and you continue to mix it. You can stretch it. And so you've basically done your mix. It's, it's, it's a very simple thing to do in, its, uh, in a nutshell. And then after you let it ferment for a long period of time, you can let it ferment in a warm environment uh, you know, for three or four hours. And then you can toss it in the fridge for eight to 12 hours to 18 hours. Yeah. Okay. Whether this is bread or pizza, whatever dough you're making, yeah. you kind of do the same thing. And then after that uh, cold period of proofing um, or an all warm proof, you can shape it into a ball or you can shape it into a baguette or you can shape it into whatever. Um, you can throw sesame seeds on it and then you put it into an oven. Um, and then you, you know, you take it out of the oven. That's and then really you eat it. It. <laughs> no, but that's you the know? beauty of it. Like people get so intimidated yeah. by like these recipes and it, and fair enough. When I got into it, you're reading these recipes and you're like 70% what? And 4% what? And, and you start, but like, honestly, what I tell people when I'm trying to teach them how to use sourdough is like, just try it. Like yeah. your nature's going to win. Nature's like, going to win. Yeah. Like you're, if you mix flour and water and some of that and some salt and you make a, what kind of looks like a ball yeah. and you let it sit for a little bit and you put it in a hot oven. That's what I'm talking about right like, there. It's going to make bread and, and gonna, you're going to be stoked that you made gonna bread. And it's going to be naturally delicious. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't you tackle that one? Cause I think that, that you could, Ooh, uh, question from the Umi yeah. community uh, group on Facebook. I love this. What are the benefits of using sourdough? Uh, so sourdough to me, like I said, is like this most pure form of making bread, pizza, whatever, whatever bread products, right? Like it's proven it's it, ancient Egyptians. Some people theorize that basically they had this like porridge they made out of like their wheat and water and they kind of let it sit in the corner and they saw some bubbles and it became this magical yeah. thing. Dionysus. I, I read that they like forgot about it. Someone yeah, was, yeah, like, someone yeah. was walking through like, oh snap, forgot about that porridge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was about to eat his porridge. He was like, this don't look right. Yeah, and people didn't understand <laughs> it. Like Dionysus, I think, was yeah. like the Greek of Roman God. Sorry, I don't know my mythology of, of fermentation. Like like it was, it was seen as cold fire, like this right. understanding of like how you cook things without heat. Right. And so for me, it's like this pure way of making bread. And when you use it, in the right way when you're making bread with it and you let things naturally ferment and sit a couple things are happening that don't happen in bread products like that bread product you saw the, the sourdough french baguette right Amen. when you just use active dry yeast again not knocking active dry yeast it has its place but it, that's one part of bread making correct. sourdough you enter in a second part which is the bacteria part correct and the bacteria part super super important so it's lactic acid bacteria lab people call it and lactic acid bacteria in sourdough is what makes sourdough sour that's where it gets its name so it's bacteria that's actually eating uh the structure of the dough it's eating the sugars in the dough it's creating lactic acid mm. right mm-hmm. and acetic acid it's what it's what's in vinegar right mm-hmm. it's just yeah. like that flavor that's where that's coming from so when you make sourdough the benefits of that i find there's health benefits to it i've had many people when i was running my pizza uh, pop-up with health issues 
come up to me. I had a lady in tears give me a big hug one day who told her doctor told her she would never be able to have bread or pizza again. She's in tears because she was able to eat a piece of my pizza and not immediately break out. Right. Because I don't know. It's cold fire. It's magic. Yeah. Like, it, like it really is. <laughs> like it's that Rose Hill sour. Yeah. Though, so man. what's the benefit of it? I mean, the yeah. benefit to me, besides like a structural benefit, like we can get all kinds of stuff in natural fermentation and bread structure For and crumb sure. and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, from pure like science point of it, it's just this, this black magic. I don't understand. I, I think that look, it makes the it makes gluten easily digestible. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's what um, you know. At the end of the day, I know it when I eat it uh, compared to other uh, yeasted products. Um, you can add, you know, if you have a sourdough starter that you're not managing properly or you're unsure Ooh, if you're managing I have it. some of that. Yeah, we can get into some that. Of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so <clears throat> we have this starter here that's kind of uh, built this little film on top. It's, it's looking, it smells delicious, actually. <laughs> this sounds really good. It smells good. really good. This um, really good. So that's no, no. That's the 170 this, year old this stuff. Is the, oh yeah, the, yeah. The, actually, you know what, man? Let's 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 let's. We, we need to get into we need to get into the whole uh, age of the starter thing at some point. This is going to be a long video. You um, guys are right. <laughs> we got um, catering coming. Hold on, hold on. We got so, craft so services if, if coming. You, <laughs> if you have a starter that you haven't maintained properly, okay, so you've got this pre-fermented flour. Um, you can, you know, obviously you, it's not dead. You can revive it. You give yeah. it a couple of feedings. And even, even if it stays dead for a little bit, you can use it in things to help with the fermentation in, a, like if you're making pasta, um, you know, I wouldn't say, oh, hey, I'm making sourdough pasta. Like that, it's, it's, a little, it's a little much, right? It's not a leavened product, but what does that mean? Mm. It means that you're taking some pre-fermented gluten and you're putting it into something to aid the digestion of what you're mm. about to eat. That, you know, that, that's a benefit. It's not, yeah, you know, so it, it can be seen as kind of like a, a gimmick or market marketing type thing or gimmicky, like, oh, it's like sourdough pancakes. Like, why would someone say that? Well, it's just, is it so just I, yeah. using the word sourdough? Waffles and stuff. To, to yeah. But no, it's yeah. not, we're not trying to benefit it, benefit from saying the word sourdough. Um, what we're saying is we're using pre-fermented flour in things to make them a, a little, you know, a little bit healthier, Absolutely. a little bit better for you to digest, Absolutely. make you feel better. Uh, you have a big brunch with like a stack of pancakes. Uh, you know, you've got that sourdough culture in there to kind of help you not feel too bad. Um, so that's, that, <laughs> Honestly, you know, works. I'm it's, telling you. Uh, that's, that, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this is kind of a starter that's a little bit dead. Yeah. Um, but it's not dead though. It's, no, it's a little bit dead. It's a little yeah. bit dead. You just got to remember. I mean, it's not dead. It's sad. It's not dead. <laughs> right, it's, it's, not, it's not dead. In I science mean, terms, it's dormant. I, it's dormant. Yeah. Okay. You bring yeah. the science back in. <laughs> I, I was, I, I've let some starters sit for like a month yeah. and they turn like that black. black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They turn, yo. And I revive them. You can. After like, a, yeah. but there, you know, there's no point in even doing that. Actually, you can make a new starter in That's four true. days. Yeah. Uh, but to revive one, sometimes it's like you're like feeding it for a week, and you're like, oh my god, is it gonna? It's like, yeah. <laughs> just make a new one. Yeah. Totally yeah. make a new one. Yeah. Um, so Rebecca wants to know, what's up, Rebecca? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> where can Ooh. you get sourdough starter? Ooh. Do you make it from scratch? Where can you get sourdough starter? Um, I believe you can order or get sourdough starter from this guy, Rose Hill Sourdough, like <laughs> $5. Uh, I think he ships anywhere in the continental US. No, I'm just kidding. I actually used um, to do that. Yeah, I know. I know. That's what I was. That's what I was. Um, I've seen at like, um, is there Whole Foods here? Uh, no, there's no, no, no Whole Foods equivalent. Okay, like Whole Foods. There is a Whole Foods. Oh, there is in London. Yeah, in, oh, in London. I've learned that's, you said I've seen, that's I've seen posh. that like, uh, these, right? posh. posh? These kinds of grocery stores tend to, I, I've seen before, like a packaged uh, sourdough starter. Yeah. I, sure. I mean, I guess you can buy them. I guess yeah. you can, I, I think there's, um, I think there are people that sell sourdough starter. I mean. You absolutely can. I sold them for a long time. Yeah. I, I don't see the problem with that. I yeah. mean, I think spreading the love is, is part of uh, the community. But uh, the other part of your question, Rebecca, is do you make it from scratch? Um, and so I would, I, I, yeah. I do, um, I believe. Yeah, I, I made my, right. I made, besides my 170 year yeah. old one, yes, I made one from um, scratch. The, yeah. the 170 year old one, huh? It, it that, honestly that, is, 1849. So, so, so before I answer, yeah, yeah. Do, do I make it from scratch? Yeah. We, we got it. Like, do you think age makes a difference? Absolutely, I do. do you think yeah, it makes it's a crazy. Difference? It's crazy. I, I, so I have to say, I don't, I don't believe it. Have you used something that old, though? I don't know. No, I haven't, yeah. used, I haven't used something. So, like, I've noticed a difference just between, like, week two and, like, year two. Okay. Like, a difference. But in terms of how strong I call her Nona. Um, Nona. Nona. Oh. <laughs> my other one's Lucille. 
Um, and then Nona is 170 years old. Lucille okay. is about two and a half years old. Um, you can just tell like when I don't feed, if I neglect Nona or whatever, and I, she's in the back of the fridge and I pull her out and I, I, I kind of pour off that's grain alcohol. That's yeah. all it is on top, yeah. ethanol, just pour that off. Take the little top layer off. That's just all dead, really dormant yeast and bacteria. Really dormant. Just throw that off. You all you need is the tiniest bit. You just need the tiniest, yeah, tiniest yeah, bit yeah, to yeah, start. Little yeah, flour and water, yeah. and it just goes up. And Nona doubles. Like we talked about, yeah. how much it rises. Yeah. And usually you look for like two x or three x rise. And Nona, like in one feeding, is back to two x. All right. Two feedings back. To I'm 3X. not gonna knock it till I try. <laughs> but I, you know, hey, I, you know, I'll, I'll have to see. I'll have yeah, to give yeah, it a try. Yeah. So, but yes, Rebecca, but yeah, we, we, we do make ours from yeah, scratch. Yeah, make it from I mean, scratch, uh, and it's fun. It's fun. It What's gives the risk? you it gives you a little baby to take care Absolutely. of. Absolutely. It gives you a connection. Um, and if, if you're really interested it, yeah. in sourdough, I would say the best way to, to go about it is to make it yourself. Absolutely. Um, all right. So, a question from the uh, community group: How is making sourdough pizza? different from other types of pizza dough. Uh, you want to start here? Why, are you scared? No. You scared to uh, No, that? not I at mean, all. What, what happened I've, now? So, I mean, <laughs> what's no, up? go for it. I've been what's talking up? a lot. Uni Community Group, how yeah, are you guys yeah, doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the, the question, uh, what, what was the question? The question went away. What Difference was? between sourdough pizza ah, dough ah, yes. and other ways of making pizza. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, other ways of making pizza. It depends on what type of pizza you're trying to make. There's uh, many different types of pizza, right? So you have Roman style pizza, pan pizza, deep dish, Detroit. Yeah. But uh, most commonly, uh, I'll make a Napoleon style pizza, and pizza napolitana, um, where you have um, a pizza crust that's a little bit thicker. You want it wood fired. Uh, it's a little bit soft in the middle. That's uh, typically you would use fresh yeast. Um, you would mix the dough. You would knead it. You, you know, you might not need to work it that much because that that yeast really softens up your dough. Yeah. Um, and it strengthens that gluten. Yeah. So you kind of mix it. You might let it ferment for a while. You might put it straight in the fridge. <clears throat> but with that fresh yeast, you're kind of confident that it's going to grow. It's going to work. Sourdough is very different. Um, using a, a sourdough starter to bake is different because you have to make sure that you get a nice uh, kickstart to your fermentation. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that uh, the temperature and all these variables are, are working. Yeah. Um, you also have to work your dough a little bit more because you don't have that kickstart of fresh yeast to soften it up and strengthen it. So. When I mix with my sourdough starter, I'm usually kneading for a good while. Um, I also like to make the dough a little bit drier mm. uh, than usual. So mm. I'll make my starter kind of stiff, which means I don't put that much water in the sourdough starter. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'll work the dough a little bit more. I'll knead it by hand and I'll give it a nice uh, bulk fermentation so that I know that it's uh, alive and well. Um, the thing about using sourdough is sometimes when you bake, uh, you might see a, a result that looks sad you might bake a loaf of bread and it comes out like this uh, tall true. and there's no way to go through your process and know what went wrong was my yeah. starter wrong was the yeah. fermentation wrong was the was the proof not long enough was the bulk not long enough you won't really know but a good way to ensure success is to like know you got a good fermentation and yeah. so with sourdough i like to kind of let it bulk and let it proof for a long, long, long time to, to know I've got the strength yeah. uh, so that when I fire the pizza off in the oven, uh, I get that good rise. Yeah. I mean, we got some pizza. We might as well start making pizza too. That's kind of part of the, yeah, the chat. Yeah. Bring but some, bring I'll some pizza about, over. And, uh, so, so this is, so this is, uh, I mean, I already stretched it cause I was checking it earlier. Sorry, babe. I'm taking my wedding ring off. I still love you. Uh, <laughs> we should so, probably, uh, we should probably reflower yeah, this. So this guy's getting, this. so he's getting stuck. So uh, tip 101, when you're launching pizza, don't let it sit on the peel for too long. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to move that there. Can peel. Um, so Maybe. actually the opposite when I make my, my sourdough pizza. Okay. I actually don't need it. Oh, nice. I do I do uh, folds. Oh, you give it folds? Yeah. Like making bread. Exactly. That's cool. Interesting, exactly. yeah. So I, t I treat my pizza. I say pizza starts with good bread, and so I treat my pizza just like I treat my bread. So I'm doing... Uh, about this is about a, a 63% basically don't worry about that it's just water to flour I guess I shouldn't say don't worry about that people want to know about they want to know they Mike they want to know tell so, them so 63% anytime you see these recipes don't feel overwhelmed by the math like I feel like I get the math just because that's how my mind works but some people get overwhelmed by it there's so many resources online I mean, your blog is a great one like of like explaining these things breaking these things down it really is like there's people that care about this and care about sharing it yeah that can let you know hey, this is what this type of stuff means, right? So 63% is basically the ratio. Everything in baking is to flour. So uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I want to taste well, the bread. Why don't we do this? Why don't, why don't I make a pizza and you answer yeah, that yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. So that one's, uh, that one's towards you. Yeah, so it's just, wanna... it's literally just 
just water to flour is so this is 63% water to flour. Mm. I don't know who made the sauce. Oh, someone who made, made this sauce? from scratch? This is like a homemade sauce? Yeah, we'll say it's a homemade sauce. I think he made it. That's why he, that's why he, that's why he walked <laughs> yeah. away laughing. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, uh, I say good pizza starts with good bread. So I, I treat my dough just like bread. I give it a rough mix. Uh, I let it sit for like an hour. I give it a first fold. I let it sit for like another half an hour. And then a few more folds after that. Folds, literally all you're doing is just, if, like you, hand laminating. You just got your laminator. But before that, hand laminating croissants is yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're just making layers. Yeah. And then making layers. Making and then making layers. layers. And that's all you're doing. It's the same thing with bread. You just With pizza dough. You're just making layers and making layers and making layers. So there's so many ways to do this. Uh, you know, there's so many different ways to make dough, obviously. So another thing, you know, you should keep in mind as we're answering these questions you know, everyone's going to have a different technique. Everyone's going to have a different kind of method of doing things. So don't feel like, you know, if, if you're not using the method that I use or that he uses, it's not like you're doing anything wrong. Yeah. If your dough doesn't come out looking like someone else's dough, always keep in mind that that like it's your dough. Your dough is going to look how your dough is going to look. Yeah. Like that, you know, so and you have pride in it at mind. the end too, because you, you made it. It's is cool. It, That's for the latte just, and then uh, fresh mozzarella. You yeah. just handed it to me. Yeah, so go for you it. want me to put this on there? All right, I'll do it. No, no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Will asks, Mike, how are you enjoying the move to Uni HQ in Scotland? How do you turn your sourdough starter into pizza dough? It's a great question. So uh, I did just move to Scotland from California, and uh, it's amazing. I've been trying to convince Brian all afternoon to move here. Uh, <laughs> not only uh, Uni, I'm not going to get like crazy into this, but Uni is like a fantastic company. Like I've, I've uprooted my whole life and moved my family over here. I, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't believe in this company. So. That's partly why I'm here. That's but awesome. um, That's awesome, it's also, brother. I heard that you might be coming over and I was like, accept, take the role, <laughs> take the role, move, get to meet Brian. Um, so yeah, so how do you turn sourdough starter into pizza though? That's great. So, so sourdough starter, like we talked about, literally all it is is flour and water. That's just have, it's had time to ferment and, and you mix it with more flour and water, mix it with more flour and water. People ask like, how do you feed sourdough? Uh, Sarah is asking, as in my wife, Sarah? <laughs> Potentially, yes, my wife, perfect. <laughs> um, wow, I got my, I feel why myself turning red. Anyway, why did you take your wedding ring off? Uh, so, anyway, it's just it's just flour, water. It's having some time to ferment. When you feed sourdough, it's literally just feeding flour and water. That's it, flour, water, flour, water. Um, you mix it with more flour, water, salt, and oil. That's literally it. That's how you make pizza dough. Like, you, there's some recipes you can follow. Though. Um, I do a 10% again by weight sourdough started to flour. What's your typical, you do about 10%. What do you normally do um, on the, on the, this is the thing I love about this dude though. Cause like, he was like, Oh yeah, let's feed some starter. And I was like, cool. I'll go grab a scale. He's like, what do you need a scale for? Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about how much seed do I mix with? Yeah. yeah so, so when you're making, when you're making pizza dough, what percentage of starter to flour are you Oh, man, I pump it up. 40, yeah. 40%. Really? Yo, 40%. All right, see? Pump it up, man. This is let, cool, it, like, let it work. That's let what it I love go. about this, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, let, let it, but for sure, um, everyone does it differently. Yeah. I definitely like Oh, we're looking great. Oh, nice. We're going to... We're gonna. It's going to shimmy off there. Yeah, I well, let that one sit for way too long. Yeah, yeah. This fault. is all your fault. So it, why don't you take over? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't embarrass myself. Do it. Do it. All right, sweet. Um, so yeah, uh, did you answer Sarah's question yet? What's your favorite thing to make with sourdough? That's a good question. It depends on my daughter's watching Coconut bread. Not. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> panda coco. I would have loved to make some panda coco. No, no. Nah, nah, what's really your fun. favorite thing to make with sourdough? Uh, is that really your favorite thing to make? I mean, I, I love, I feel like that's you though. Um, yeah, that's man. That's your recipe. It, it's, uh, yeah. Panda coco is very amazing to make with sourdough. It's so a lot of times uh, when I make these enriched breads or these sweeter breads with sourdough, uh, with my starter, um, people kind of, they ask a lot of questions about it, like, how do you make uh, something sweet? I thought it was supposed to be sour. Like, does it taste sweet? You know, if I make a brioche or a babka, they're like, yo, does it taste sweet or is it sour? You know, and these are beginning bakers. So um, my, my job really is to answer these questions and guide people through and say, you know, no, it's not sour. You can make sweet breads with uh, your starter. Uh, it's just a way to make your bread rise. Um, so my favorite thing to make is usually like enriched sweet type breads, semitas, Honduran things, weird things, tortillas, um, yeah. pizza, obviously. Yeah. So I, it's hard to pick one favorite. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, besides pizza, because I love making pizza. I do. My sourdough waffles are crazy. I love the sourdough waffles. Um, 
We're, we're looking on here. We're getting pretty close. Yo, here. my man is crushing this bake right now. <laughs> uh, there's a question for you again yeah, from yeah. Julius. Yeah. What's going on, Julius? How's your day going? Um, Mike. Yeah. Has your sourdough Ooh. starter changed since you moved to a different climate? Ab absolutely, it has. Absolutely, it has. Um, so the first, when I first got into sourdough, I was, I, I took. Uh, let's just flip this bad boy over. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. chapeau, chapeau. Yeah. Oh, oh, beautiful. Um, Do we actually have to eat? Before? Yeah. <laughs> um, we should probably cut it on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. When I moved to, uh, when I was in Southern California, I went up to visit my wife's family in Northern California and I made some bread for them and I just got into making sourdough. And I swear, being there one day, it changed. And I was like, you might, do you, do you think that it changes that quickly? Some um, people have challenged me on that. What do you mean, the flavor? The flavor, absolutely. I would say yes, it does. It changes in appearance and flavor. Yeah. Um, I took my starter to Panama in Central America. That was probably the most adventurous place I've taken it. Um, I gave it one feeding and it like, I will say like the home bakery I was, uh, helping out in was very hot. I mean, it was very hot in yeah, Panama, yeah, yeah. like, uh, so I gave it one feeding and it, it, it got nice and strong and yeah. ripe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I used it and made some banging bread. I mean, I, I didn't notice a change in the flavor of the bread. Yeah. I wasn't looking for it though. Um, I typically don't like to. I don't know. I, I guess I don't analyze things that much, Mike. I'm just like, yo, it, yo, it worked. Did the bread taste good? Yeah, it yeah. tasted really good. All right, guys, I'm leaving. So that's um, that's pretty much how I do it. Yeah, no, that's fair. I honestly, yes, though, I, I feel like it has changed. Uh, that was the question. I feel like it absolutely has changed um, from climate. Like there's things that naturally that are floating in the air, natural yeast and bacteria that's gonna get into your culture as soon as you move it to your starter, um, and it's gonna affect the flavor and and uh, how well you're how well it rises. Yeah, that's a good gonna point. Change it. Humidity is going to change it. And that's the coolest how, thing though about this. How does like, humidity change your, um, that's one question I get a lot um, being in Miami. Um, and then it took me a while to really understand like how humidity is affecting the baking. And obviously um, one of the biggest things is that that moisture in the air kind of like seeps into everything you do. Um, so I actually like to hydrate my starters um, not at 100% because sometimes I know that they're just going to randomly be wetter and a little bit hotter. Um, same with like dough mixes. Um, keep my water levels in the dough low because the humidity can kind yeah. of come in and wreak havoc. Totally so fair. I've noticed that being here too. It's not as warm as where I came from, but it's definitely more humid. Right. So I've had to adjust a little bit in my recipe. Is, hu is humid out there? It's it, <laughs> crazy, right? Because humid to me means hot. It means yeah. like I'm sweating. I'm yeah. dying because it's so humid. Here, it's just beautiful. Can, it I, start, can I eat? Please. Can I eat? Cool. Right. Ooh. Uh, here we go. Yuka asks, uh, can you use any kind of What's flour? up, Yuka? Is this Yuka Yuka? Like, oh, what up? What's good? Hey. I don't know you, but <laughs> what's going on? My guy. Yuka. Everything, everything is going good, by the way, Yuka. <laughs> Yuka. We're what's good up? hands here. Can you use any kind of flour? <laughs> I love the name. Yeah. I love eating Yuka. So it's like, can you use any kind of flour in your star starters? <laughs> yes. <laughs> here's what here's what you don't and correct me <laughs> you put some chilies on me you're all right i thought you can handle those these are pepperoncinis get back to work let me all recover right. <laughs> let me recover I got you. I got you. <laughs> um what you're looking for specifically in the states at least i haven't noticed here look for unbleached mm. unbleached flour is yeah what you want to use right so well you don't want bleach in your food so well, um <laughs> that's, that's true. typically that's what point. i do Unbleached flour. Yeah, unbleached, yeah. So I use um, in my in Lucille, I feed with half bread flour and half whole uh, whole wheat flour. It's called wholemeal flour here, um, and yeah, all unbleached flours. Right. Um, if you can get organic flours, even better. Even better. Um, what about the the specific berries? You know, like uh, different between using rye or using you know hard red winter wheat, yeah. and or you know even spelt. I, w I will say that <clears throat> I I've never used any gluten-free flours like rice flour, oat flour, uh, coconut flour, almond flour, those kinds of things. Um, if, if you want to call them flour, I guess, or powdered stuff. I've never used that in my starter, although I know there is a pretty successful gluten-free sourdough baker out there. Uh, I'm not sure how that culture gets developed, but mm. for these uh, for these wheats or a gluten-based um, culture, you got me saying culture now. You got me, you got me sophisticated. Sounded smarter. Um, for, those, for those, you can use anything, rye, wheat flour. I usually start my starters 
uh, from scratch with rye flour. It's got that nice yeah. juicy bacteria on it yeah. and it gets like super funky like really quick. Um, you could also start one with whole wheat uh, or white or pizza zero zero flour, any flour. Yeah. Um, and then you can, you know, when you're going to go make bread or make dough, you can have a rye starter, but then you can make a, a, a leaven or another starter with a different flour because you might want to have like a semolina bread or something. I've been playing around with semolina flour nice. at work, actually. Beautiful. So I've been doing like semolina in the starter um, just to get that like flavor from it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, really what you're looking for in your starter, honestly, it's, it's just good getting good quality and a rye is really popular. Because rye yeah. definitely is a little more complex and it gives you a little bit different base flour. When I was learning, everyone told me, use rye, use rye. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that's the easiest way to get a starter going is with yeah. rye. I think the tricky part about using rye it becomes when you want to transition it into, um, I mean, because like I would never use, or not, not to say never, but uh, that 100% rye starter, I might not really want to use that when I'm making bread, when I'm making like a, a, a rustic country loaf or a white loaf or a wheat loaf because it does tend to be a little bit denser and it does give you a little bit of a heavier um, end product. So from you have to kind of transition that rye starter by feeding it. Like once it's healthy, you start to feed it different types of flour to kind of get that little, that lighter balance um, of texture. Yeah. So next question. Yeah, yeah. What's the Philip, Ooh. what's good, Phil? How's it going, brother? Hope your day is great. Is this Rosenthal, do you think? I don't know. It could be. That'd be cool. Yeah, even if it's not Rosenthal, I still... <laughs> I respect you, Phil. I appreciate you. <laughs> <That's a> good, <laughs> what's the best good point? What's the best sourdough pizza dough you've ever eaten at? Um, I I have never eaten at a sourdough specific pizza joint. So I know you have. So I'll, yeah, let, yeah. You, I'll let you take. Yeah. Uh, typically, when I look for pizza places, I look for naturally fermented or something sourdough or something. Like I'll look and I'll, I'll He's do classic. a little research. He's, he's high class. I just I know how normal pizza makes me feel now. Like it just makes me feel. I don't know, like garbage. Yeah. So like that deep fried pizza we had earlier. Deep fried pizza. <laughs> um, so so so, 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 so best place uh, around here is a place called. Can I can I drop pizza place name? Yeah, cool. Uh, there's a place called East Pizza in uh, in Edinburgh that I really enjoy. Um, met with the owner, super cool guy. We just chatted about sourdough. Like he really cares about it. How's the pizza, by the way? The pizza is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It is so. This is the this is the Rose Hill sourdough. That is, yeah. This is the best. Hey, Philip, to answer your question, <laughs> this is the best <laughs> sourdough pizzeria I've ever eaten at. It's at Uni headquarters. It's called Rose Hill Sourdough Pizza, and yeah, it's beautiful. the bomb.com. Yeah, you beautiful. already know. Um, yeah, so what you're saying though is that you like to seek out these sourdough pizza mm. joints because um, it makes you feel better after you eat the pizza. Hundred percent. That's a pretty reasonable. Um, Reason, I, a reasonable yeah, yeah. reason. I don't, I don't know about that English, guys. I'm sorry, but that makes sense. Um, Kevin, what's going on, Kevin? Much respect, <laughs> mad love. Kevin wants to know. You guys are legends. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are legends. What are those green things on your pizza? Um, <clears throat> what was that? Oh, that's I think, put on there right now. I think the green stuff that you just put right now. That's sage. Sage. Yeah, that's sage. sage. So I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna cut up this lime a little bit. I can't remember what I put on. He's this doing the green like. pizza, guys. I think he's doing the green monster. Um, That's what he got. So, so I like I like just different stuff. Like honestly, I'm a fan of white pies. White pies just is a very broad category. No tomato sauce. Yeah. Olive oil based except tomato sauce. For sure. Um, I actually prefer white pies to tomato sauce pies. I hope my uh, Italian relatives aren't spinning their graves right now with me saying that, but. Um, I just do. I prefer it. I think the tomato sauce a lot of times can overpower uh, more delicate ingredients. Uh -huh. um, and so specifically like in this, I'm That's using beautiful. Um, some sage. And then, but I've also got feta. Uh, sometimes I do goat cheese on here um, mm. with a little mozzarella. And then I hit this with a little bit of honey. Um, have a look. Oh, it's looks cooked good. to perfection. Oh yeah, it looks really good. Oh, it looks um, so good. <laughs> so... This right here is sage, but I, I do a lot of, I love using uh, cilantro, coriander. Um, it's called coriander here, by the way. Cilantro is called I've had a, I've had a hard coriander. Time. I've, I've heard of this before. I've had a this hard time with that. Mythical coriander. Yeah, yeah. I don't that's know what it. that is. Um, but speaking of ingredients, yeah, yeah. This, this brings up a good, because I know we've got something over here that. Uh, Ooh, can bring be, it up. Yeah. Bring this, it up. Let's talk about this, it. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about this, it. This uh, pineapple. Um, yes. How do you feel about pineapple on pizzas? And I think it's kind of silly 
that we even have to talk about this. Yeah, like, why, why are you even talking about yeah, it? Yeah. Like, why why can't you just put whatever you want to put on a pizza? I 100% agree with you. Um, look, man, I'll put pineapple on pizza. I put beans on a pizza before, yep. and it was really good, like black beans. Um, That's honey, by the way. <laughs> honey? That's honey. Try that. I'm going to go ahead and try it. Uh, no, honestly, yeah, absolutely. Pineapple, 100%. Hashtag Team Pineapple. I'm not, I'm not afraid to say it. Absolutely 100% pineapple. Because if you're using it right, like what else? How's that? This is, this is amazing. <laughs> this is so good. I'm sorry, Philip and Kevin. All I'm so sorry that you ain't here. You should be here. This is so good. You like that one? Yeah. Uh, you can take that you used one. To sell that this, you used to sell this one, huh? Yeah. Damn, man. You had a good business. <laughs> Hands down, the best sourdough pizzeria I've ever been to. Mm. But I'm with you. Like, like I put cauliflower and carrot and curry on a pizza, and you're gonna tell me that's not a pizza? Like, that sounds like an amazing pizza. It's a really good pizza. Cauliflower, carrot, curry. Yeah. Man, I would tear it up. Some cilantro, lime on top. Damn. Yeah, absolutely. Jalapenos. It's killer. Uni community, what's up, guys? Uni community, y'all are the best. What's Ooh. good? Ours and B, you already know. Would your question? <laughs> your question is. Would you recommend using a pre-ferment with your starter rather than using it direct, similar to how you would use a leaven or levain with sourdough bread? Um, I, I have to reread this in, in my head to make sure that I am understanding it. Um, I think I know what you're saying, but yeah. Okay, why don't, you take, why don't you take a stab at it? So I think, I think what's being asked, we mentioned a poolish earlier, and we said mm. we were going to come back to it. Maybe and we didn't, and time, we didn't. Maybe a good time to come back didn't. to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a pre-ferment, um, but was it pre-ferment with your starter? I know, with your starter. I don't So I think quite get that one. So a pre-ferment, let's just talk about, let's just go over yeah, yeah. We'll, how we interpret We'll figure it out. A pre-ferment, it could be a starter, it could be um, any form of basically pre-fermenting some flour before you put it into your final mix of dough. All right. That's the whole uh, that's why we're here. Yep. We like we like to pre-ferment flour into a starter. That's what we call a starter. Yep. Um, and we don't add any uh, fresh yeast or anything like that to it, right? So that's our method. There are other types of pre-ferments, though. Yep. You can make what's called a poolish, um, which is basically a tiny little spike of uh, fresh or uh, active yeast into um, flour and water of usually 100% uh, hydration. So equal amount of flour, equal amount of water, spike of yeast, mix it up, put it on top of your fridge. In the morning, you have this nice yeasty fermenty sticky weird thing and it's, it is delicious i'm not gonna lie so that's one type of pre-ferment another um a biga that's the other one that people always talk about it's essentially a poolish that's less hydrated mm -hmm. it's just a, you know it's a stiff yeah. poolish basically yeah. sorry sorry biga purists out there if i, <laughs> if I just like is butchered that similar? Is that, i got a real question for you. is that similar to like a pasta madre I actually, you talking about that thing that they cut in, yeah, in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie, man, when I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> so let's not talk about All it. Right, cool. <laughs> Listen, do, so. not be, do not use a pasta mandre. You heard it here first. Ours and Brian, roast with sourdough. Oh, just chill, get, I'm chill, just kidding. Chill, chill. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Pasta mandre, I got, I got love for you, pasta mandre. All right, so let me get back to the question. Would yeah, I yeah. use a pre-ferment with your, oh, okay. Yeah, I've done that many times. Um, I've used, uh, like baguettes is a good example, okay? When people want baguettes, they want a crispy, airy, light, long, crusty loaf of bread. Yep. Um, and sometimes when you use only your sourdough starter, your, your baguette can be a little bit heavy. Mm. It's, it, look, man, I'm not going to lie. It's not perfect. You know, sometimes you make this bread, it doesn't come out to be what it is supposed to be. Mm. That's, what, that's like when you make sourdough croissants, it's very difficult. Oh my gosh. The dough is very, very hard to work with. You usually end up with something that's pretty dense. So that's not a croissant. People don't buy croissants for a dense biscuit-like thing, mm. right? So people don't buy baguettes for a really tough to chew hard bread. So how do you get the benefits of using sourdough and the form of a baguette? Well, you can use a different pre-ferment like a poolish yeah, at yeah. the same time. Yeah, 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 I get what you're Because saying. that little bit of instant yeast or fresh yeast really softens up and, and firms up the dough to where it's more workable. You can hydrate it more and not have any issues and the texture comes out crispy and light just like a baguette should. Um, so that, as I interpret the question, uni community, definitely you can use a, a different type of pre-ferment with your starter. Yep. Um, the more the merrier. Yeah. 
the more the merrier. Honestly, you, like you're just love, you're just layering flavors at that point and texture. Yeah, like, I saw a video the other day. Not to get too far off topic, but I think it was a Tartine Bakery. They they put like leaven, poolish, fresh yeast, and all kind of yeah, stuff yeah. into like croissant dough or something. I was like, oh, yeah. why not just throw it all in? Yeah, um, you, so each that, each one of those is gonna bring a little bit of a different something something to the party for sure. Cool, Laura is asking what's up laura what's good oh, much respect brian's live stream. i've been making sourdough pizza but the dough turns out too acidic how can i solve this yeah so we were talking about that yeah. that um sometimes the, uh, well so the first um remedy usually to that is to use your starter when you're making the mix don't use it when it's too old mm -hmm. um for a quick rundown, I guess we haven't really run down like the timing of like Do how to, yeah, when yeah. to use your starter. Yeah. So you, Talk you, about you refreshing. Made, you, you've made it. Too, yeah, yeah. You've used these flowers that we talked about that you can use. Um, at what point do you use it after you you mix it for you so, so that you can use? Um, and there's stages. People, you know, there's this naming convention of like a young leaven or a young starter yeah, yeah, yeah. or a mature starter. Yeah. Um, basically, if you mix your starter to make bread and you come back in like three hours or four hours, and it's got like some nice strength to it, but it's not all the way bubbly and, and, and old, you can definitely use it there. And you're gonna get a milder, I find that you're gonna get a milder flavor from the sourdough starter itself. Yep. Um, so you, to typically to remedy that problem, use it at a younger stage, uh, you know, a, a earlier time frame. Um, if you use it when it's a little bit old and, and bubbly, usually 12 hours after, yeah, you're definitely gonna get that strong yeah. acidic flavor. A couple other things you can do too is you can use less of your sourdough mm -hmm. and let it ferment longer, which Correct. is a little counterintuitive, but because some people think, oh, if I let it ferment longer, it's gonna be more sour. It depends on how you ferment it. Yeah, so I mean, can, that can totally happen as well. Um, but again, it's all about timing basically. So uh, what Mike is saying, you can use less of the starter in the dough ferment it for a little bit longer, but then just be aware that by fermenting it longer, you can also develop that. Especially if you cold ferment again. it. Especially if you cold ferment Yeah. And then also last thing is you could refresh your starter by just taking a little, little bit yeah. out and feeding a ton of it. And that'll be less sour in general too. All right. Question from the computer mind. Okay. Question. <laughs> is it hard to master sourdough pizza? Um, <clears throat> well, the word master is yeah. pretty, yeah. Um, it's a loaded question. That's a, that's a strong, <laughs> <laughs> that's a strong, is it hard to master? Cause I'm not going to claim to be a master. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm not a master. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not honestly almost, I'm not a master, but is it, is it, is it hard to get really comfortable? You know, yeah. when, when I think of mastering things, um, I think being comfortable with something enough to where you can, uh, do things off the top of your head and, you know, kind of not use a scale sometimes when you're measuring and being familiar with the dough so it's much crazy that you know, the result you're going to get. Yeah. No, I don't do it at work guys. Let's yeah. not be confused. Like, I'm not out there running a bakery and not measuring things. Let's yeah. not be confused. <laughs> Come on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it just takes patience and time just like with making good bread. When you mm. first start, you're probably going to make something that's not what you wanted it to be. Uh, most people have um, expectations going into this. If you have ex expectations, which you should, by the way, if you have expectations going into making bread because you've seen on Instagram these beautiful open loaves, oh, or if you've seen sure. Mike's amazing delicious pizza and such me freaking out because it's so good, you have an expectation. So, so then what point. you want to do is, then what you want to do is master. You want to get better at it. So you just have to do it over and over again. Fail a bunch of times because failing is the best. You heard it here first. Absolutely. Failing is the best because that's where you get, to, that's your R and D. You get to learn, you get to start to experiment with things and try to figure out what you did wrong to make it better. So it just takes time and practice. Um, Brian, we want to see you make a pizza. Let's do it. All right. Let's I'll make it. another pizza. Let's, um, where's the dough at? Right behind you. Right over there in those white bins. All right. Some dredging flour there. You got a, you, you got a, um, a no. little thing to get it out. What you've been using? You know, you've been doing the, the little Rose Hill secret, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> the little Rose Hill secret. Can I put it directly on that table? If you want to. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, I'm fortunate <clears throat> to have been able to travel here and have someone like Mike who made amazing dough. <clears throat> so, kudos to him. This dough feels <clears throat> fantastic. Um, I don't know. I'll just get into it. Like. I'm picking up the dough. It's got extensibility, but it's also, you can feel that it's a bit strong. The bubbles are very nice. It's gotten a long fermentation. Typically what I'll do is I'll kind of push 
the edges out here. All right. I'm going to move this cheese. I'm going to get a little bit more flour, actually. You've probably been doing the same thing. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what you've been doing. Then I'll kind of give it a little... Uh, been eating. <laughs> I've been eating and choking on it. I'll give it a little uh, stretch like that. And then I'll comically try to be a real Italian here. <laughs> give, it, give it a few of these. By a few, I mean a lot. All right. Then I'll get back at it like this. All right. Until I've got my little uh, circular shape here. And of course, Mike, you did a great job with this dough. It's very strong. Thanks, okay. Man. You can tell a dough has gotten the right stretching or kneading when you can handle it with ease and it stretches out. Um, so anyway, but I like to push the gas out to the corners so that I get a defined crust. Um, and then I stretch it out and then boom, I've got my nice little dough here. And uh, let's make a pineapple pizza, guys. <laughs> let's do it. Sh straight pineapple. <laughs> Only pineapple. That's it. No, nah, I, don't, I don't know. Should we? Sure. Should we do that? Yeah, let's do that. This is for, <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if I'm going to get hate mail over this. Um, <laughs> Just yeah, pineapple. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's do an only, and honey. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, let's put honey first. Let's, uh, yeah. What is it, thyme? Thyme, honey, thyme, yes, yes. I like the sound of that. I'm going to put a nice drizzle of honey here. Mike's going to pick some fresh thyme from our garden. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to take this pineapple and I'm going to crush it up. Nice knife skills, Mike. <laughs> Went to culinary Pre school. Appreciate you. I toured one once. Oh, okay. <laughs> pineapple. I mean, people like the pineapple ham thing. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's should, you got to have I, something put, savory. And, yeah, absolutely. You think I should put, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to do pineapple honey. That's looking kind of gangster right there. And then we're going to put... Um, what is this? Pepperonis. There's a little bit different. Pepperoni. Yeah, yeah. A little spiciness. Put some, That'll be nice. Put some ron ronies on Put here. Rooms. Put some ronies off at the top of the doni. <laughs> 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 All right, that's good. And then the thyme. Boom. Oh, you don't as much want as you want. Bam. Emerald style, baby. Boom. Get it. Some thyme right there. All of it went into the same spot because I was right. trying to be cute. So that, that was not good. That's my slice right there. Wanna, there we go. So. Yeah, man. Some uh, pineapple, a little bit of pepperoni. Um, uh, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Brian got to do it. My yeah. bad. <laughs> Brian's got to do it. Beautiful. So we just showed a couple different techniques there. Um, so I typically like to build on a wooden peel and retrieve on a metal peel. Um, that's just because I've had a bad experience when I was learning to make pizza on trying to launch from metal peels. A lot of people get frustrated with pizza sticking to the peel. I feel like one of my top questions yeah. I get from people, how do I make it not stick? How do I make it not stick? First of all, you gotta have good dough. You gotta have good dough. You gotta have good dough. Uh, second, this method, a, a lot of people like flour in the counter. Absolutely. Flour is your friend. Pulling onto the, onto the and peel. Pull, yeah, and pull then it. You, you don't have any time for it to stick. Yeah. 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 You don't have time for it to stick. Um, where did my pizza go? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we're cooking today uh, in Uni Pro on gas. Um, Brian just giving that thing a quick, quick turn. Um, this is of of the Uni lineup. What's your favorite? What's your favorite oven that you cooked with? Brian? The Uni Pro yeah. all day. <laughs> Honestly, though, like it's a it's a great it's a great. I oven. like the Uni Pro mostly yeah. because since I'm a baker and I love bread. Um, I get to also make bread in the Uni Pro. Um, I've talked about that many times. Let's get that bed. Let's get that dome. Little dome. Let's dome it up. So in, in pizza making, what Brian's doing right now is bringing that pizza up to the dome, typically in like big, in, in big <laughs> ovens. The dome. Like, in big like, ovens. Yeah. That's the hottest part of the oven is actually right at the top. That's where all the hot air is uh, trapped. So you're just throwing it up at the top just to give it a little more color. Uh, Andrew's asking, why do people use rye flour to start and feed their sourdough starters? Boom. Such I a like, good yo, question. I like that dark and crispy, yes, baby. Absolutely. You already know. Absolutely. Um, you want to take this? Rye flour. Why do people use rye? Why do people? <clears throat> so, Andrew, what's going on, brother? Thank you for your question. I appreciate and respect you. Um, Andrew's asking, why do we use rye flour? Um, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, before, I believe rye berries have, they're loaded with different types of bacteria. 
um, and it just gives an environment that's very conducive to the growth and fermentation of the flour when you start that culture. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, I really think that's it. it. It's very potent. Yeah. I, I, think about, I think of it like a very potent uh, compared to white flour. If you use white flour, basically what's happened to that is that the, the, the bran and the germ and those good uh, nutrient and bacteria rich Ooh, parts open. of uh, the wheat berry have been removed. Um, whereas when you have that rye berry, not only is it already loaded up with that good stuff, you know, that good, uh, you know, nutrient rich environment, it's not taken away from the yeah. berry. So when it's milled, you're getting all of that into in your bag of flour, even if it's from the grocery store, you still got that in there. So when you feed it, that wild yeast loves to come in there and just start eating it. And, yeah. you know, that's really so. what it is. Like it's a rye is an easy one to do because you make sure you do have the whole part of the flour. So when when it's growing um, and they pick that grain off, if they strip it open, just take the germ out. That's how we get white flour. You're Absolutely. leaving all that stuff behind where all the wild yeast and bacteria has been clinging on to. I think that's why mine worked so well feeding it with whole wheat flour to start. Same reason. Yeah, I got the whole wheat. Right. I didn't yeah. just get the germ out yeah. of it. But, you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I've made successful starters using only white flour, like bread flour. I've made successful starters with uh, zero zero pizza type flour. So don't be intimidated that you need to go buy rye flour or, or something like that if you don't have access to it or if you can't find it or if it's too expensive because it can be expensive sometimes. Yeah, true. Go go with some white flour, man. Make it happen. Um, and on that note, we have. Uh, another question from Kieran. What's good, Kieran? What's good? Thanks for the question. Um, what's a good recipe for a new sourdough starter? Good question. Um, so mine is super simple. Four ounces or 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water. Mix together. Leave it on your countertop, covered. And do this at a time of day that you're, nev that you're not going to miss doing it. For example, when you wake up or right before you go to bed. And if you do it in the middle of the day, you might have a couple days where you forget about it because uh, you're just busy. But right before bed, usually it's like brushing your teeth. You're like, oh, got to go feed my starter. We've all been there, right? You're uh -huh. like laying in bed and you have to like get up. Oh, I forgot to feed. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it's true. Sure. Like so one time I had to drive to work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for, uh, equal parts flour, water, mixed together on a countertop. Do that for four or five days and you're going to start to see a rise and fall. Um, so, Mike. I think it's time for us to wrap up, what? brother. It has been what? That an was so fun. Absolute Dang, pleasure. That was great to be with Uni here in Scotland, and with this dude here, dude. who's a pizza taste tester. You know, you're awesome. I Thanks, appreciate man. you. I appreciate you for Thank sure, you. brother. Thank you guys. Uni, thank you guys for tuning in, Uni community, all you people, Kieran, Phil, everybody, whole yeah. team, <laughs> mad love. <laughs> Phil, my guy, Phil, my guy, Phil. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right. Hey, you want to try this? We're going to try this.